Hi, welcome back. Let's move on to the second chapter of mathematical logic. It's called the predicate logic or first order logic, which handles little more complex statements. So far, our discussion was confined to simple statements, their truth values, equivalences, and validity. Let's broaden the scope of our discussion. Suppose I have statements like this. Rani is a girl. Radha is a girl. Ram is a girl. What's your observation? We can clearly make out these statements are similar as they are specifying a common behavior that is being a girl, right? Since they have a common behavior, instead of writing three propositional statements, we can use some variables and make it to a single statement like this p of x, x is a girl, where x is a set of people, Rani, Radha, Ram. Here, is a girl is called predicate, which means a behavior or a property. x is a variable and p of x is a predicate function. And this is a set of objects called the domain or universe of discourse. When we substitute the object in the predicate function, it becomes a predicate statement like this. These are instances or predicate statements, which can be assigned with a truth value. But a predicate function is an open statement, so we cannot assign any truth value. Similar to propositions, even predicate statements can be connected with logical connectors like and, or, implication, etc. Here are a few examples. All these predicate statements follow the logical equivalence rules. Suppose I have a set X, apples, oranges, and mangoes, and the predicate function is P of X, X is a fruit. When we test this for every object, it always becomes true. Instead of writing each statement, I could uh, write this as all are fruits. And to denote this kind of statement, we shall use a special symbol for all. This is called a universal quantifier. And we can read this as for all x, this becomes true. On similar lines for the set y, apples, oranges, chocolate biscuit, I cannot claim that it's always true, but I can definitely say for some y, it is true, which I can write as some are fruits. This sum can be represented symbolically as this and read as there exists some x, which is true. This is called an existential quantifier. Now look at this. Every city in India is clean. And the domain is city, Delhi, Hyderabad, Florida, Bay of Bengal. Now if I want to put this in symbols, first I'll pick up the predicate functions. C of x, x is a city in India. L of x, x is a clean city. Then I can put it into symbols as for all x, C implies L and it can be read as for all x if x is a city in india then it is clean now look at this some days are holidays days are diwali first monday tomato i can put it to predicate functions as d of x is x is a day h of x is x is holiday then i can put this into symbols as there exists x d and h and i can read it as there exists an x which is a day and it is a holiday now you may have a doubt why did we use implication in for all and conjunction in there exist can't we use any other operator the thing is these are the only operators which satisfy in all conditions let's introspect uh, with the previous example itself, 
by swapping the connectors. And for all, if I use AND operator, it gives a meaning like this. For all x, x is a city in India and x is clean. And this statement fails for Florida and Bay of Bengal. So I cannot use AND. In there exist, if I use implication operator, it gives a meaning. There exists an x. If x is a day, then x is holiday. This fails for tomato, as tomato is not a day and it is not a holiday. False implies false is true. So if you run this in a machine with implication operator, then machine says tomato is accepted for holiday because it's becoming true, which is actually wrong. So for all is always associated with implication and there exist is always associated with conjunction. Blindly remember this. It's very, very important. One more observation. When a predicate function is associated with for all or there exist, it's no more of predicate function. It becomes a predicate statement and it can be assigned with a truth value. And they act similar to propositions. So all the logical equivalence rules and inferences are applicable for the quantified statements. Now look at this function. For all x, p of x and q of y. Here, for all is connected to just p of x. Or I can say this as x is bounded, but y is free. And this x is called as the bound variable and y is called a free variable. Here are some examples. So here again, x is bound variable and y is free. Here in this, this there exists is only associated to p of x, not to q of x. This is free variable. 